Hello and welcome to today's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we have got just, just, I say just, we have got just normal killer Sudoku today. This puzzle is called Polar Attraction. This maverick takes off from the local airport to come and buzz by my window, sorry about this. And it's by Pietato. Um, now, Pietato is a brilliant constructor and also a brilliant solver. Um, and I looked on Logic Masters Germany before I started the webcam and this one's got three stars out of five for difficulty and some absolutely lovely comments. So I understand why this has been put on my to-do list. Um, well, names that some of you will be familiar with like Belsita and Doomed Yacht are saying things like this, this is the best killer Sudoku I've ever solved. So this clearly has got some absolute uh, absolutely mesmerizing logic built into it and i'm quite excited because i can see a couple of cages here where i can write in some options um so we'll get cracking with this in in a moment or two i don't have much to tell you about today um the outro is by request um it is well it's a poem um and this is because i solved a cryptic crossword a while back uh on the, on the channel and one of the clues was poet um, the definitions was poet and the answer prior which I came up with rang the vaguest bell for Matthew prior in the back of my mind and some er very erudite listeners recommended me a poem called um, it's called a simile and I read it a couple of times and I, I was really struck by it it's, it's a very very cool and some of you have asked me to read a bit of poetry so that's in the outro <laughs> it's <laughs> I apologize to those people who don't want to listen to poetry. You don't have to listen to it. You can turn off the, vi the video at that point. Anyway, I, it's a poem I certainly admire and thanks to those of you who recommended it to me. Um, now, what else did I want to mention? Nothing, I don't think. Do support us if you enjoy the, if you enjoy the content. We do have Patreon. It's the biggest and best Sudoku club on earth. And um, yeah, and we'd love it if you could subscribe to if you enjoy what we do. But that said and done, let's have a look at polar attraction. I don't know why it's called polar attraction. Let me just meditate on that momentarily. I mean, why could it be called polar attraction? I have, n I literally have no idea. Um, but these are the rules. Uh, normal Sudoku rules apply. Within each cage, digits cannot repeat and must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage if given. And that's it. Okay, so I can see we do have at least two cages where we've not given the total. But this cage, for example, we've got to fill with digits that sum to 16 and we can't uh, repeat a digit. So what we couldn't do is something like this and then make these two cells add up to 12 because even though this cage does add up to 16, it's got a repeated two in it and that is expressly against the rules. So don't do that or you'll get the puzzle wrong, but do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play, let's get cracking. Oh, someone was saying as well that I should turn large digits off for on or I can't remember which one it was. Well, that doesn't seem to have made any difference. <laughs> oh, maybe it wasn't large digits. Maybe it was large cages or something. Let me just have a look and just see whether or not I know how to do that. I don't, I probably don't actually. Uh, I need to do actually more research. But someone was saying that when, um, yeah, when I highlight cages, sometimes you couldn't see the number in the top left hand corner of the cage. And I can sort of see that there, that 16 is a little obscured, but I can't see how to fix it. Anyway. Let's get going. Um, so what we'll do first is we'll put one, two, three in there and seven, eight, nine in there. There's only one possible combination of three Sudoku digits, three different digits that add up to 24. Uh, given you can't repeat a digit, that's seven, eight, nine and one, two, three for a six cage. Uh, okay, and then, well, this 12 cage is either going to be five, seven or four, eight because it can't be three, nine anymore. And how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I thought this might be a nine cell cage, which is particularly inept of me. It's not, it's an eight cell cage. So that's interesting. So this is what I might term a geometric cage then. Because, because we don't know its total, the only real point of it must be the sort of no repeating digits business. 
yeah okay so those two cells add up to 13 I can see that let's just let's just analyze why that must be the case so we can ask where these two digits live in box 7 of the Sudoku now obviously neither of these digits can repeat within its column and neither of these digits can repeat within its cage so there are only two places where those digits live um, ah right okay and therefore these two digits are a domino exactly there in column one because we can't overlap green with this cell because if we if one of these cells was this cell the other cell would be at least a 10 and that's not a valid sudoku digit now now here's an interesting point as well then okay so if these are green and they are what is that and i think that's that isn't it because that digit can't repeat in its column and can't repeat in its cage and it's not the same as green so it lives in there somewhere in the 24 cage and therefore by Sudoku it lives there because it's not green so this digit is a 1, 2 or a 3 this is very cute so far and that's putting quite a low digit into quite a high cage uh, let's just think about that for a moment so if this was a 1 this cage would be filled the other three digits would be six, eight, nine, because they'd have to add to 23 without repeating a digit. Mm, can't see how to do that. Um, right, so maybe I, do I do get the same thing with this cage? The geometry is identical, isn't it? So those two cells must be the key to, yeah, so these two cells add up to seven. They're the same as those. It's exactly the same logic. Yeah, and it is exactly the same logic. Oh, I see. Hang on. Right. So look, same logic tells us this can't be orange because then it would have to be a seven zero cage because this is at least a seven, eight or a nine. So we can't put, we can't put this digit in there. So those two are orange, but that means there is a common digit between orange and green. And green here is quite a high digit, and orange here is quite a low digit. So the digit that's in common, yeah, okay. So the 13 cage is either 4, 9, 5, 8, or 6, 7. Now this digit, which has to live in a 7 cage, cannot be the 7, 8 or 9 of those combinations. So that cell is a 7, 8 or a 9, and this square is a 4, 5 or a 6. And therefore, this square is a 1, 2 or a 3. Ah, very cute. So now we've got a 1, 2, 3 triple in column, in column 2, and I'm guessing that that means this square can somehow be proved to be a 7, 8 or a 9. Let's just highlight that cell and think about that. So that cell lives in the 16 cage by sort of Sudoku and non-repeating and cage logic. And it's not the same as orange, right? So that is a 7, 8 or a 9. So that means I've got a 7, 8, 9 triple here and a 1, 2, 3 triple here. So this square is a 4, 5 or a 6 because it sees one, a 1, 2, 3 triple and a 7, 8, 9 triple. Um, okay. Sorry, I've not got anything at the moment. Let me just mull this over. <laughs> um, there's a yellow digit in the 16 cage. The yellow digit is a high number. So if this was nine, this would have to have seven more in three cells. So it would be one, two, four, triple. And that there would be a 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple in row 4. But this doesn't have to be, well, this, sorry, doesn't have to be 9, does it? It could be 8 or 7. If it's 7, these three, the other three digits have to add up to 9, and there are various ways of doing that. Well, there are exactly 3. 6, 1, 2, 5, 1, 3, and 2, 3, 4. Um... Oh, bobbins. Right, I've got nothing now. If just all of a sudden it's dried up. 
let me just what is it I'm meant to be spotting here there's I've got a one two or a three in here <laughs> sorry I'm just not I'm just not spotting it well I'm sure I'm sure we're on the right lines by thinking about this mapping. This digit is simultaneously in orange and in green. Uh, I don't know. This digit has to be in one of those two cells, so this digit lives down here. I mean, I don't even think that's worth worthy of pencil marking. What is it then? This has got a low digit and a medium digit in it. I'm so sorry, I am completely nonplussed by this. It's is it something to do with this six? I mean, I can see it's limited in, in boxes two and four. <laughs> I don't know. This is very odd. I, I, I'm literally, I just feel like I've run smack bang into a brick wall. Uh, could I... Okay, do I know one of those digits is a 1, 2, or a 3? Maybe there's a virtual 1, 2, 3 triple in this row. Because the 16 cage, it must have... Um, or what's it got in it? It's got a 7, 8, or a 9. So, I, okay, I can't make up the balance of this cage with low digits, with ones, twos, and threes, because then it'll never get enough. One, two, and three add up to six. So there is at least one medium digit in here. Now, are there two medium digits? Is that possible? Four plus five plus seven is already 16. No. Right, so this cage has got two low digits in it. Um, and by the, okay, that is interesting. So it's got two low digits, I, and when I say low, I do specifically mean from one, two, and three. Um, and those two digits cannot go there, look, because they'll clash. I could only put one of them there. So one of these digits is yellow, which is seven, eight, nine, and one of them is low, which is one of these two. I don't really know how to show that. Uh, One of these digits is low, so that so that dig so that digit in oh no that digit could go here, oh no hang on, no that's no actually that's really nice. Oh I've got right hang on I've see, hang on I see what I've been missing, hang on. This digit is that digit, isn't it? Yes. Ah, oh, this is obvious. Right. That digit can't be there. And blue has already appeared. So in this one, two, three, triple, which one is this one? It's that one. So, ah, so do I have to split up? Maybe I have to split up orange. Let's, let's, um, let's replace orange. Or let's, how should we do this? We'll, we'll, we'll replace orange with one that's orange, one that's grey. So this is going to be orange and grey. This is going to be orange and grey. And now I can say that that's grey. I don't know what this is. This needs to be a different colour altogether. Let's make that purple. Um, so purple is in here. But, but the critical thing is I think this has got purple in it. Let's just check that logic. So I worked out one of these squares was a one, two, or a three. It's clearly not the gray digit, and it's not the blue digit, so it is purple. That's very, very cool. 
and that means I place purple in um, in box box one. I'm sorry about that. I think many of you will have got there miles before I did. I, I just for some reason I was obsessed with dominoes and I wasn't thinking about the digits individually. Um, now I, I think I'm going to be able to run this logic. Hang on, let me just think about this. So. So now I know one of these squares is a four, five or a six and one of them is a, there must be blue in here. There is a blue digit in here. And the other digit is a four, five or a six. I don't know what it is. And that means that blue is in one of those cells by Sudoku. And oh, nearly. I thought that was going to do some magic for me, but it doesn't quite. Blue. No, okay. So, so let's try that again on this cage then. Now at the moment we know this has got one very low digit in it. So the symmetrical logic would suggest that this needs to have two very high digits in it because we worked out that had to have two very low digits on it. So does this have to have, because it's got a one, two or a three in it, does it have to have two of seven, eight and nine in it? Now, if it only had one of seven, eight and nine, let's make it nine and let's make this digit a three. Oh, yes, I think I need it to be as a maximum, don't I? Or, well, hang on. If it had six and five in it and three, six, six, five, three, 14, no, then it would need 10, 10 as its high digit. That doesn't work. So it does this. This is exactly the same as this cage. It's just on the high side. This needs to have two of seven, eight and nine in it. And those cells cannot go there. So this domino is made up of one digit cell, which is a seven, eight or a nine, which is not yellow and it's not and it's not a green, it's not, it's not this digit. So again, we're going to have to split this one up now. Um, so let's replace green with, well, one, one can be green. Or maybe I need to let, use orange here somehow. I probably, I probably can use orange. Okay, so if I make this orange green, then this is orange green. And this is orange green. That makes sense, doesn't it? And then I know that this domino contains a high digit that's not capable of being green or yellow. So it is. Ah, so that becomes green, of course. This is some new, this is a new, a new experience. We have to choose a color. We'll choose red, not use red yet. So this has got to have red in it. And that means that square is red by Sudoku. <laughs> and that means that this square is four, five or six by Sudoku. And we've got a four, five, six triple across box one, which is rather beautiful. And all sorts of things going on in this column and this row, but they, that seems very complicated to work out what that, that is. Uh, can I do that easily? I've got, okay, that's a low and a high. This is a low and a medium. So one of these is high and one of these is medium, I think. Ah, that can't be high. Let me just double check that. Is that right? I think that is right. I think this has to be a medium number by, by Sudoku. Because it sees all the high digits and in its row it sees, I think it sees all three low digits. It sees grey, blue and purple that's all of them yeah so that's a four five or a six and this is a seven eight or a nine no it's not seven eight or a nine hang on let's just double check this is this medium no it can't be another medium because there's a medium in here this is this is the green digit sorry that's been available for ages as well that's just sudoku why is my phone buzzing at me nothing important good um now if we can do that in this row i think we should be able to because it's been so symmetrical we ought to be able to do that in this column now oh the other thing is i need to fill these two digits in because i could do a bit of this one i, lo I love these puzzles where there's symmetry because you sort of once you've done it on one side you know you need to be doing it on the other side as well 
Now we know this is low and high. So we need a high and a medium in here. So the high digit we haven't had is yellow. There's definitely a yellow in there. And we don't know which one. See, I just pressed the wrong button there. I want to go back to there because I want to do that. And then I want one of these squares to be a four, five or a six. Now, now in this column, this square sees a one, two, three triple. Now I'm expecting it to have to be a four, five or a six, which means we must see all of the high digits, which are yellow, green and red. It definitely sees yellow, green and red. So that is a four, five or a six. And this square, therefore, is going to be a low digit. And we can probably know what it is because it's got to be gray. And that's there we go. Right. <laughs> so what does all this mean? <laughs> I don't have a clue. It's... Ah, I don't know. I mean, it's magnificent that we can do all that shading, but... You know, it's genuinely fascinating that those two cages y yield this result. And that you can fully sort of specify the end the entropy of box one. What's yellow? Yellow's high, okay. And what's this? Ah, uh, right. That square is four, five, or six as well because this square sees all three low digits and also in this column it sees all three high digits. It's just hard to see that because you have to remember that yellow is high and blue is low. But that is true. So there's a weird little four, five, ah, that's not six. There's a weird little four, five, six thing going on. So there's a four, five, six triple in both column four and row four. So these squares are seven, eight, nine. Ah, ha, that's clever. They've got to be seven, eight, nine, because we know we, we know this is a medium and a low. So we've got all the lows and we've got all the mediums. So that's seven, eight, nine, and this must be one, two, three. Okay, and that corresponds with a blue pencil mark. So I see, and that corresponds with a yellow pencil mark. So we've got a one, two, three, triple here. Now, can we get any of these digits? Can that really be blue? Because if that can't be blue, we know that's blue. Or can we rule gray out of one of these? What, what's, what's orange and blue? Sorry, orange and green. Orange and green is medium and high. I don't know. Um, uh, sorry, <laughs> the pregnant pause while I got to try and work out what on earth it is I'm meant to be spotting as a result of this. I think I need to extend the colouring somehow. I have a feeling I can colour the, either these or... Well, I suspect if I can colour one of these, I can colour the other one. Um, it sort of feels like this is trying to be yellow, doesn't it? If that were, Yeah, see, if that was yellow, this would be green and this would be the other one, which is uh, red. So that would plonk red here, which looks very reasonable, doesn't it? Why is this yellow? If this is not yellow, this is yellow. And then this would be green and red. I don't know. Um, orange. Uh, 
right oh, is this right is I'm sort of trying to convince is, is this digit the same as this digit or is that just nonsense this digit is an orange yeah okay those two digits are the same uh, I think I'm running out of colors here to demonstrate this uh, I can make them light green they're the same I think because that digit whatever it is is not orange and these are not orange so this digit let's say that let's say this was a five these digits are not orange let's say orange was six so these would have to both be four so these are both the same now but the problem with this one is it doesn't see orange does it it sees <laughs> no it doesn't see, it does see yellow and blue but yellow and blue are not low, not, not medium digits so this digit down here is not green and this digit is not green do i know whether this is I know that's green now don't I I certainly do that must make sense so that's that's the ninth color so I've only got one color left I'll have to make it black um, which is not very easy to see so that I'm right so I'm, I think the trick is this one then I must know what color this is somehow it's not green so in theory it's black or orange Oh, I know what, ah, uh, I don't, I what? Well, no, I don't know what it is, but I know how to do this. Oh, that's sick. Right. That's really, this is really clever. This is really clever. <laughs> Pietato, take a bow. Right. I am going to tell you, I'm going to allege Hang on, let me just work out this. I am going to allege that red. I know what I know what red is and I know what purple is at this point. I think I can state what red and purple are. If you can't see how to do that, pause the video because I promise you if you spot this you'll like it. It's very 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 cool <laughs> if you like nice sudoku logic and i do right now the trick here is to look at this cage and this cage and look at the composition of each one from a coloring perspective now what's in this one yellow and blue and something else we well, two other things but definitely yellow and blue this one's got yellow and blue in it as well that's quite interesting isn't it but What's the nature of the four, five, and six that lives in this one? Well, let's be very clear about how, what, what color, the, well, no, what, what is the nature of this four, five, and six? Now, it's not light green, and it's not this one, whatever this one. So it's, all we can say about it for sure is it's, it's not light green, and it's not this one. What about this four, five, six? Well, I can say exactly the same thing about that 456. It's not light green and it's not that one. So the 456 in here and the 456 in there are the same. And if I could color them, then they would have the same color. In other words, this cage has two digits, yellow and, and uh, blue, and a 456. And this has yellow, blue and a 456. And those 456s are the same. So three of the numbers in that are the same as three of the numbers in that. And yet the fourth number is contributing a difference between the cages of eight. Well, how can that work? So the, the, the fourth number in this must be a one and the fourth number in this must be a nine. Isn't oh, that's just that is it's take me half an hour <laughs> to spot that. But that is absolutely lovely. And that means red red specifically red because red is the is the color that doesn't appear over there red is nine and it means that purple is one 
Now, I don't know yet if that's going to do. In a perfect world, this would just finish the puzzle because some, that, something like that that's been set up to be that pretty, it, it just would be fabulous if it finishes the puzzle. But maybe it doesn't finish the puzzle. Hang on. Red is down here. So there's a nine in one of these. There's a nine in one of these. There's a one in one of these. And there's a one in one of those. And that's not one. Oh, for goodness sake. Right. <laughs> okay. Oh, come on. That that's just flexing on the world, Pietato, that is. That is just flex. How is how have I not had like a billion recommendations to do this puzzle? This look, I've just not one out of this. Well, remember those two squares added up to 7. So if I can't put 1 in there, I can't put 6 in there. But I've got rid of 9 from here. These two added up to 13. So if I get rid of 9 from here, what can I not put in there? 4. So this digit has just become a 5. And that must go with a 2 there and an 8 there mathematically. So that's a 7. That's an 8. That's an 8. That's a 7. This is a 3. So that's a 2. That's a 2. That's a 3. There's now definitely a... Th so this has now become a 3-9 pair which add up to 12. So these two digits have to add up to 12. So one of them is not now 6. Uh, and one of them can't be 8 because we can't put 4, 8 in there. So this has become 5, 7. This has become a 4. Uh, 4, we don't... I don't think I still know. Oh, I do know the colour now. It's not orange, is it? And it's not, it's not that one which I've just seen has got to be a six by the power of Sudoku. So it's this one. This is the black digit. Um, I can't remember if that's what I thought it was going to be or not, but it doesn't matter. We're now getting somewhere, aren't we? So this this is now a one seven pair by colouring. One and seven add up to eight. So these add up to eight. So this is either three five or two six. Well, it's not two six, so it must be three five. Um, that's not seven. This isn't eight. Don't know about that one. This is a two five pair. This is a two five pair. This is a three four pair. So this is one, three and four in the top row, look. Okay, how do we finish this off? Oh, right, I've seen one thing. Look at this. <laughs> this, this, is, this is absolutely stellar. It is absolutely stellar. This this domino adds up to eight. Well, it's not three five then, and it's not one seven, so it's two six. That's all it can be, and we know the order. In fact, two and six, two and five, five and three. Uh, right, in that triple, the only one that can now be two is this one. So that does the three, does the one. Um, is that going to work the same way for this 12 cage? Of course it is. <laughs> I don't even know this this worked without the nine in the corner so I don't know why this nine is here but look it's exactly the same as this beautiful eight can't be five seven or three nine so that's four eight and in fact it's resolved so that's eight that's four that's three now so that's four so this is now oh whoopsie ah wah, 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 wah. no 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 one three pair by Sudoku um, that 8 is giving me a 9, 9, 7, that's got to be 8. So these squares are 3, 5, 6, which we can, we can put the 3 in. Oh, not 3, 5, 6 actually, but the 3 is still correct. I've got a 6 in the middle, but I never see black digits because basically they're so rare that I don't get give them, given them very often. So this is still, I'm still sort of chugging my way through the Sudoku at the moment. Right, what are those digits then? Four, six, and nine. Aha. I wonder if that's what this nine's doing. So I get a six, nine pair, and I get a four here. So I need one, sevens, and eights in this column, which I don't think I can do yet. Well, that one's not seven, actually. 
That one? Hmm, not sure. Oh, that's a six. So that's a six. This is five and eight. Oh, we can do that. Okay, this is five and eight. We can do that. I see. That gets me the five and the seven. The nine gets me the three and the nine. I've just realized. Let's get it the right way around. One, two, and six in the bottom row. So that's one or six in the corner. I've not been looking for threes in the corner, actually. That's one or two. That's Ah, that's a naked single. That can only be a one. It sees two and six. So we can get all of those done. Is that done in a thing? Ah, yeah, that gets me the one and the seven. That gets me the eight. Therefore, this is a seven. These digits, maybe. Four, seven, and nine. Bar humbug. <laughs> I, don't, I, I mean, I can do some eliminations. I know that's not seven. And I know that's not nine. But this is four or seven. So this is one, four, seven remainder, isn't it? Whoops. Oh, okay, so we are going to have to do a bit more, a bit more thinking. Four, six, and nine over here. So this is six or nine. This is four, six, or nine. One in this box can only go here. So this is four, six, or nine. Ah, four or nine, because it sees six in the center. Oh, a six, nine pair in this column. That seems like it might matter. So this has become a two, five pair. So these two squares are a three eight pair and we can do them eight and three. And this box needs one, four, six, nine. So four and six are on this side and we can fill them in. And this is nine and one. That gets me the four here, which gets me a four and a seven and a one here and a nine here and a seven here. That gets me nine, six, four, nine, six, one whoops one three what a puzzle that is that is just abs zero i did it in zero <laughs> i don't know why it does that at the moment but it seems to want to that's one of the best killer sudokus i have ever ever seen full stop polar attract why is it called polar attraction is it something to do with i mean it was all about box one wasn't it and sort of I don't know, is this the North Pole or something? I don't know. I don't know why it's called that. I, I, I'd like to know anything at all about this puzzle. This is the sort of puzzle that makes me think a set of video would be fascinating because it's so clever to have the conception that you can use this geometry to pinpoint stuff about this. And it, it felt sort of it felt almost like it, you know we were glimpsing the divine, didn't it? The way this all melted or melded together, and then you could see the difference between these cages. That was sublime, and the fact that even once you get that, you then figure out that's a five in the corner. I mean, that deserves its own song. That is a brilliant puzzle. That is that live that will live long in the memory, Pietato. Brilliant, absolutely sensational. And I know I've messed up the colouring. You'll have to forgive me a bit for that. Oh, although some people won't. So actually, let me just correct it before I turn off the camera. Because that will please people if it looks like we've done it. So all of the eights in the grid. Oh, all of the eights in the grid all need to be this colour. All of the sevens in the grid all need to be this colour. All of the ones in the grid all need to be purple. What colour was... Oh, so it turned out that the blue was three. So let's do that. I suppose we can actually do all of them, can't we? That one's got to be black. Uh, what was nine? Nine was red at the, at the end of the day. Oh, we're going to create a pretty picture here. Two became grey. Uh, six was light green. And five was orange, uh, and that five's being very naughty, and that five's being very naughty. Now, is that that is as pretty as a picture? I think it's still probably right. <laughs> we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. A simile by Matthew Pryor. 
Dear Thomas, didst thou never pop thy head into a tin man's shop? There, Thomas, didst thou never see, tis but by way of simile, a squirrel spend his little rage in jumping round a rolling cage. The cage is either side turned up, striking a ring of bells atop. Moved in the orb, pleased with the chimes, the foolish creature thinks he climbs. But here or there, turn wood or wire, he never gets two inches higher. So fares it with those merry blades that frisk it under pindus shades. In noble songs and lofty odes they tread on stars and talk with gods, still dancing in an airy round, still pleased with their own verses sound, brought back how fast so o'er they go, always aspiring, always low.